Hello everyone and welcome to another used Hair Castle graphics card review. In this particular one we're going to be taking a look at one of Nvidia's classic cards which is of course the venerable GTX 750 Ti. As with all of my graphics card reviews we're going to be taking a quick overlook at the history and specs of the card and we're going to be looking at some benchmarks to see exactly how much it can offer in 2019. Now it's not the oldest card I reviewed, but this one was released in 2014, making it 5 years old at the time of recording. The 750Ti was also released with 4GB and 2GB versions, however the one we're looking at today is a bargain I managed to pick up with the 2GB of VRAM. Although the overall layout can vary from vendor to vendor, the one we're looking at today is the usual layout with a HDMI, DVI and VGA output pretty flexible no matter what you want to do with it. If you're watching this then you no doubt into your tech and you will have no doubt heard of this card and let me tell you that legendary status is certainly well earned. It's been a capable performer since its release. I've personally had one for well over a year in one of my older systems and it was perfect right up until I wanted to upgrade and splurge at the beginning of last year. Moving a bit deeper into the specs of this particular card, the model number is the Storm X Dual, which is referring to the Dual fans. The memory has 2GB of GDDR5. It has a basic clock speed of just over 1200 MHz with a boost speed of just under 1300. It has 640 CUDA cores, supports DirectX 12 and OpenGL 4.5, but more crucially, it only requires a 300 watt PSU. Now it's important to point out that this can also come in variants which do require external power supply, which my original version way back a couple of years ago did. However, this particular one I saw after because it doesn't require any additional power supply, making it a perfect addition for entry level gaming or if you're looking to upgrade a business unit like a Dell or any pre-built system without an additional power supply. Very handy indeed. Next up, let's take a look at some benchmarks and see what this puppy can do. Okay, so first up we've got the excellent Battlefield 1. This is running on high settings at 1080p, and as you can see it has a very respectable set of FPS. Decent average, very respectable lows, and of course you can drop the detail down if you want to push that a bit further. One of my favourites next in the form of City Skylines. Now to be honest this seems to either run okay or not at all, and this is one of the instances where it runs okay. And we're looking at 1080p as per usual with a just below 30 fps average which again for this game is totally respectable and certainly playable it's not a very fast paced game now excuse the poor gameplay here i am awful at this game i purely play it for benchmarking but overwatch running on medium settings very nice indeed just under 70 fps average very playable and if you're into this kind of thing i'm sure you'd have fun with it Okay, a classic which I still love to play to this day, Dirt 3 unsurprisingly runs brilliantly on this on the highest possible settings. You're looking at just over 60 FPS, very very playable. If you haven't played this game you can pick it up for just a couple of quid, it's well recommended and certainly worth taking time into. Okay, I don't know why I actually benchmark this because I'm awful at it and I don't really like playing it anymore, but PUBG on low settings runs perfectly fine just under 60 fps now this does go to show that how well this game has been optimized as originally this wouldn't work very well at all which is why i upgraded my card in the first place never mind okay a new one to us in the uk anyway the rings of elysium now in a rare event you'll see here i actually got a kill and uh, yeah that's mainly why i'm showing you this clip but back to the point at hand the specifications of this card run it very very well indeed at medium settings with 44 average frames per second and of course you can drop the detail down if you want to push it even more. GTA unsurprisingly being one of the older titles runs absolutely fine so if you're still playing this game and are looking for a cheap graphics card to make it run pretty well I would definitely suggest the 750Ti.
Okay, this one's a bit different. I tried uh, this game at 1080p, and as you can see, the average was even below what I would consider acceptable, really. Uh, so what I ended up doing is actually dropping it down to 720p, which you'll see in a moment. So if you see here, we're looking at just over 20 FPS average, which for me, yep, you could work with it, but it's not ideal. Just by dropping it down a little bit more to 720p, we've hit that magic 30 FPS, a lot smoother, certainly worth playing if you're into this kind of game. Obviously, I think a new, more modern card would book better, of course, but hey, for what the price of this card is, it's worth a shot. The Padre doesn't seem too keen on the play. Okay, this is another game I've picked up recently on Homeville Bundle, which is a brilliant thing, I'd highly recommend. I'm awful at it, and I'm actually using a keyboard, which is why the, the actual gameplay is even worse. But that's beside the point, as you'll see, on medium to low settings, the average frame rate is very, very playable indeed. Uh, you can obviously drop this down if you, if you want it it's super smooth, but for me that's perfectly fine. And finally, we've got Fortnite. Or I should say next up we've got Fortnite. And uh, yeah, this game will pretty much run on anything these days, and the 750 Ti is no exception. It'll run very acceptably. So if you're into this game still, this card's well worth a look. Moving on to CSGO, another game I'm not awfully good at, but I do enjoy playing from time to time. And unsurprisingly, this also runs very well indeed, with an average of just under 90 FPS. With respectable lows, although my particular set I'm using for benchmark could be the cause of this. But yeah, at just under 90 FPS average, this definitely is worth playing. And the age old question, can it run Crisis? Well, yeah, easily. We're on high settings, we're averaging... 70 FPS, I uh, played a good quarter of an hour of it, up to the beach, etc. No problems at all, very playable, if you're still playing this classic game, that is. So there we go, that's how it performs in 2019. Now, would I recommend this card? Absolutely, 100% I would. But there is one stipulation to that, and that's the price. If you can pick one up for a reasonable price, I pay just over £20 for mine, then fantastic. Really, it's very hard to beat the value for money. But given the status of the card, it can be quite expensive to pick up used. So don't be stung. Just because I recommend them, you may find a better deal on a different card. So if you look on eBay, the current price, once you dodge all the dodgy Chinese knockoffs, is about £45 as a starting point. On CEX, it's quite a bit more, as you can see. So yeah, if you can provide, if you can get sorry, if you can get one at a good deal, then brilliant, go for it. Otherwise, maybe shop around, see if you can get a 660 Ti or such, which offers very good performance as well, and potentially could be very good on a budget. As always, thank you very much for watching my review. If you like this and want to see more, then do check out the other videos on my channel. And if you want to see regular videos from me, then please subscribe. And hey, if you're feeling really kind, drop a like on this, it really does help. Other than that, thanks again and see you in the next one.